Okay. Hi guys, so we're going to start today on how to run multiple locations. This is definitely a, uh, a uh, condensed version, not everything. Okay, so uh, it might be a good spot, we'll see. Uh, so we're going to go over that. I'll upload these slides in the group as well, that way you guys can take the notes you like. And I've already uploaded the slides from earlier today too in the group, so you guys can have those any way you like. Alright, how to run multiple locations. Currently, Team Elite has four locations. We had six for a hot minute. Talked about that this morning. Um, we had um, the one I sold to Harry about a year ago, and then another one I closed and combined it to another school. Uh, he said, well, why did you do that? Well, we were in a rough part of town. You know, we had two shootings literally right in front of the dojo. Wow. So we were in a, yeah, it was time to kind of get out of spot. We had a nice building, good rent, you wonder why? And, uh, <laughs> you know, so everything, you get what you pay for, I guess, right? And uh, so anyway, we had that, and after that, we moved up the road a little bit of our zip code, and uh, yeah, it'll be good in the long run for us. So yeah, we're not dodging bullets and dealing with all that crap. So anyway, uh, we're at four right now, uh, and again, I have friends of mine that have a whole lot more, you know, rocking and rolling. And we're going to talk about the good and the bad of multiple schools. We're going to talk about, um, you know, who's it right for, who's it not right for, and uh, we'll go from there. So again, I won't take up too much of your time today. Okay, so let's talk about why multiple schools. Start with the why. <clears throat> Number one, fame and fortune, <laughs> or so they say. That was my Indiana Jones reference. Um, I think it was part two of short round, I think. Anyway, fame and fortune, or so they say. We'll go over why they, so they may say, may be more true than sometimes. All right, uh, number two, to expand your brand. Okay, maybe you want to be the regional power, you know. Uh, number three, lots of instructors on your bench. You know, maybe you have a lot on your bench and, you know, you have a lot of black belts, what have you, um, and they're ready to teach. I know in the jiu-jitsu world, usually someone gets their black belt, they're expected to teach which I think is really cool. I think we should embrace that more in our world too, the more it starts with. And that's the way it used to be. We kind of moved away from that. Um, anyway, uh, why would you do it? Number uh, four would be market share. Maybe you want to dominate your market. You know, maybe you want to be the person, the brand, number one in your area uh, for multiple reasons. And then the next one, it's kind of hard for one person to make a big amount of money. I'm sorry, more than one person to make a whole lot of money in just one unit. Now, can you do it? Yes, there is cats that are doing six figures per month in one unit, yes. So that's cool, but for the most part, let me say, if you have a school manager and you're the owner, you know, and maybe you're, you know, you're not, you're maybe more absentee, you're not owner operator, um, you know, it's just a little harder to debut up that pie sometimes. Now, can it be done? Of course, but, you know, usually, you know, you got multiple things going on, so uh, having more than one revenue stream, you know, is definitely a good thing. All right, speaking of that, next one would be multiple sources of revenue. You know, one's not doing as well. Okay, cool, the other one picks up, or they're all doing well, and, you know, life's pretty good. All right, uh, next one, easier to attract staff and maybe retain staff. Uh, when staff sees that you are a, a growth company, they see that, okay, all right, I may want to join that group. In fact, we had a guy starting on Monday, uh, trained from Premier, um, and he starts Monday to work for us full-time as an instructor. So, good for him, good for us. And, uh, you know, the other thing I've noticed, too, is uh, staff also know I can make a career doing this, you know, so that kind of helps. Um, and then I, what doesn't have, was not up here, is also staff knows, too, that, hey, join you as opposed to maybe going on their own. Right, and that happens. You know, our world, unfortunately, more, more than it should. Um, you know, without it being a win-win, without it being talked about, and, hey, let's, you know, that's what I like about Charlie, who knows him, his three schools. I mean, he only owns one. They have three that share the name, but that's it. They're all independently owned, operated, you know. So uh, they were able to negotiate all those good things. So the uh, next one would be staff benefits plan can improve. You know, obviously strength in numbers. So when you're doing multiple things, the plan can get better. You can get better insurance and get better retirement plan. Uh, we have a 401k retirement plan as well. So it just helps because you can really do that. Um, and that's one of the nice things we see companies get bought up by bigger companies. Usually there's a lot of resources that come with that too. All right, uh, the last one on how the, on the why, uh, maybe more freedom, you know, with the daily manager, you know, maybe you can, uh, you know, get some more freedom that way. Uh, if you have someone that's running your locations for you, theoretically, life should be good, right? Right now I hired a new admin, uh, regional director, and uh, she is now dealing with all the personnel and staffing and all that crap when I'm down here hanging out with you guys, you know. 
So be able to have that is a good thing. Granted, you can do some of these things with one, uh, but that one better be a pretty good sized school, and that's usually more on the personality driven, you know, typically. Um, but you know, it doesn't have to be, but typically it is. All right, so let's go on to who. This is where it gets fun. All right, who wants multiple dojos? Any crazy mofo with lots of money and gun for punishment. Okay, that's just being real around here, okay? Uh, if you have a lot of money and you want the punishment, the gray hair and multiple martial arts schools, uh, coffee shops, it would probably be a whole lot easier, <laughs> right? Uh, obviously, you know, it's whatever you like. Um, but yeah, you gotta have a lot of uh, gun for punishment for that. Number two, anybody has to go with numbers. So if you are good with numbers, and I would tell that to anybody in a room, if you're not good with numbers, probably don't open a shop, um, or at least get good at them quickly, right? You know, because that's what that's what runs everything. Numbers run our waistline, our bank account, everything in the world of it. So, got to be good with numbers, or at least get good with numbers. Um, you, uh, also, someone who's good at hiring and training. There's a lot of people in the E Myth, which we're going to talk about, that are good at being technicians. They're lousy at being managers, and they're really bad at being entrepreneurs. Um, and, and that can be learned too, right? It's not like, well, you're born this way. Yeah, they can learn a lot, a lot of that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Next one. Uh, someone who's good at overall systems of business. They understand there's a system to it. Charlie, Charlie talked about it earlier today, by having a system, having uh, uh, POSs, you know. Um, so you have to have their SOPs. You have to have that. There's got to be a system in place. Uh, something I added on here too, anybody who's read the email by Michael Gerber, you know, to be actually like 101 of starting a small business, you know, or multiple of those. Oh, what I put out here is someone who likes to be the boss and build something. Um, you know, it's one thing to run one location. Okay, fine, no biggie. But to run multiple locations, you gotta really like telling people to do, right? You gotta be cool and comfortable with that. Um, you know, especially in our world where you have some, you know, crab and martial arts instructors that you maybe have to put in their place once in a while, right? Which we've never had to do that ever, you know? It could be anything from, hey, don't tie your shoes that way, to, hey, we you know, come in looking like a professional. You know, you don't just roll out of bed and, hey, I'm gonna go teach. No, you're gonna look like a role model, you know. Um, all right, next one, uh, somebody who has a healthy ego, pride, and ambition. You know, so maybe that's their thing. Maybe they have all these units building, they're making the community a better place, you know, but they also have that pride. I know I have, I wanna get back to five. I think that's probably it for a little while. You know, I think my ego's good there. Um, but they have to have a good, healthy ego, pride, ambition, uh, and someone with thick skin. As you guys know, being a small business or a big business, whatever it is, they're gonna throw arrows your way. And a lot of times, unfortunately, arrows come from within. The outside arrows you expect, right? You know, you got a Karen or whatever, you know, uh, maybe an, an attorney trying to get a piece of what you got. You expect it from the outside. But you'll get it from the inside too, uh, what was it? I had a lady that we don't have health insurance we offer yet. We're you know we're karate schools we don't offer that yet. This girl literally worked I think five hours a week and expect us to provide health insurance. Yeah, exactly. I was like you know I wish we could right. I mean listen I mean you know I'm all you know, good for you know, good for that. But and then even even smoked us on social media. I'm like girl you're working at a martial arts school okay we're not we're not a Fortune 500 forge company. And the only reason why she was working five days a week or five hours a week is because she couldn't show up on time. <laughs> and I can go down the list. You know, she wasn't a bad person, but just, okay, fine. How did you ever just respond to that on social media? We don't. You just keep quiet, it's better off not to yeah. say anything. You can't win that battle. <clears throat> yeah. I used to. Yeah, I used to. If you gave me a one star review, oh my God, what can I do to make it right? Can I bribe you? You know, can I, can I make it right? Um, not anymore. Yeah, not anymore. That's I mean, one of the things with Jeff. He's a little younger than me, so like yeah. we have some things. He'll start responding. Fuck him. Don't say nothing. It ain't worth it. No, it's not going to change him. You can't win it. Yeah. yeah. So I said, just leave it alone. You have to. Jeff likes to be right, but yeah. he, but he is right because he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> but you, I told Mike. Yeah. To my grandfather, you could be so right, you could be wrong. 100 percent. You yeah. keep on pushing. You got it, but What's it thing? doesn't don't, matter. Don't cross your nose to spite your face. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, 100 percent. You know. And here's the other thing too. How far are you gonna go with that? Like I'm in the after school summer camp business like Chris's. Are you really gonna tell him, hey, your kid groped another kid? I'm making that up, right? Yeah. Or hey, maybe your kid bullied five other kids, punched the coach in the nuts, this, and I mean, you're really gonna put it out there in front street. You know, or hey, your kid's got problems. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, just screenshot that one right there. You know, so it's- It's a tightrope, right? Huh? It's a tightrope. Yeah, 
You gotta be very careful. Which you gotta be you very start. careful. Um, and that's then, why yeah. I put cameras in my place. See, when we started doing yeah. this, one one. I should have done it then too. Sure. But I put cameras in as soon as we open up, just because of that reason. Because yeah. I don't want to be accused of anything. Right. I get it. Yeah. It's um. Yeah. When it comes to bad reviews, again, we used to be all, and you know, they would they freak us out with it. Now, like, that's something that we deserve. We've had a couple where, yeah, it wasn't our best day. Maybe I didn't have the best staff that I should have. Maybe I should have fired some people a little bit sooner than I did. And maybe I knew it, right? You know, I have a couple of employees like, yeah, the one's going to screw it up. It's going to be that one. You know, you could have four out of five that are awesome, but that one's going to be the knucklehead, but you knew it too. And sure enough, they showed their true colors one time, and you had to pay, you had to pay the price. Mm -hmm. You know, I have an instructor I let go about a month ago. I should have fired him three, week, uh, three months ago. Yeah, you, you, numbers were going down. I should have changed it way before I did. Yeah, and of course, no one's ever had that story. Right? <laughs> okay, um, so you better have thick skin. And then someone with a big picture, long term mindset. They might misspell there. But they got me thinking long term. You know, meaning the why. Back to the why. Is it for my brand? Is it for my staff? Okay, you know, can I scale? I mean, they got to think big. It can't just be an ego thing. It can't just be, well, I want multiple schools. Why? So you can brag, okay, 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 I get that, all right, to some degree. Can you run multiple schools? Like, I know guys who are like, I'm going to have 10 dojos. Cool, there's still one. I'm like, give me a call and get the three. Okay, you know, you get the three and you can handle that gray hair and those headaches. Cool, all right, then you might have potential to run 10. You know, and I, or I know guys that maybe they run one very well and they think because they can do that, they can run 10. You know, and the next question I would have would be, why do you want to run 10? You know, is it a certain cash flow you want to make per unit? You know, like a franchise model, you make hopefully so much per unit. Um, is it for a mission or you just live and breathe martial arts and that's your passion is, you know, take crowd to the world, the masses and this and that? Or is it just ego? You know what I'm saying? Well, hey, man, I got more than you. Cool. I mean, so, you know, I would ask who and why and what's your long-term plan. All right, next one. What are multiple locations? These are ideas for you. Number one, it could be clubs or satellites, okay? This could be done in the back of a health school, uh, studio, back of a daycare. I started at Harry School in Berea in the back of a gym, in their yoga room. Hmm. Yeah, and we were signing, had them signing contracts, paper memberships back then, inside of that business for us. So we did it from the other, I mean, I, plus I knew I was opening my own standalone school. So we did that for a month or two, literally, and then we got the school open, we moved them on over. Um, what I do now, now that I'm opening up retail schools, I just open up from the get-go and plant my flag and here we go. Yeah. Uh, but to do it as a community center club kind of thing, especially if you have a full-time job and career, that's not a bad way to go. And honestly, the net on that is not terrible. I had an old girlfriend of mine. She was cute. Um, she could do the splits and everything else. Yeah, she was a hottie. Uh, but anyway, um, she, was, uh, she was teaching at a Christian school. And uh, she was teaching, I think, two nights a week. She was charging, I think, 60 bucks a month or whatever it was. She had like 60 students, and they, should, they let her keep all of the uh, test fee money and pro shop and gear and everything. Charge her no rent at all. I mean, it's not bad for a girl in her mid-20s. You know what I'm saying? She was probably netting out of that place, what, anywhere from five to eight grand a month, somewhere there, five, six grand a month, you know, with two days a week, right? I mean, yeah, good for her, right? So it could be as a satellite or a club, okay? A lot of jujitsu schools start in a club, you know, a program, or in a karate school even, and then they go to their own, you gotta watch that. Well, they go to their own, you know, after that. Uh, the other option might be where you're like, okay, we got the staff, we, we wanna grow, we wanna be all those reasons we talked about. It might be as a license under your brand. You know, like Charlie, I'm really surprised, I wish he was here, that he's not charging a license fee to use that 360. Mm -hmm. It's his, right, it's his baby. And it could be cheap, right? It doesn't have to be gouging anybody, but that's their business, but. Uh, so yeah, it could be under your license where you don't own them per se, um, or they're a charter, kind of USKMA a little bit like an affiliate program. So it could be something like that. Uh, the next one could be as a partnership with one of your staff or black belts. And people are like, oh god, I don't like partnerships. Well, I don't either. But five, ten percent. Doesn't have to be fifty, fifty, and then you argue this and that. Maybe it's just a minority partner. You know, where, hey, you're opening one up, you know what, I'll, I'll, maybe they put the money and you help and you bring the brains. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Um, I was saying it earlier, wouldn't it be interesting if dojos, especially when they have a stud black belt or whatever, wouldn't it be interesting if the owner would have sold 5 or 10% to one of their top people? How many schools would not have broken off and opened up against each other? Mm -hmm. 
Just saying. You know, just like in the law firm, um, my, my CPA, lawyers, you buy the firm, right? If you're that good, you become partner of Dunton, Morgan, and Morgan, and Morgan, and Morgan, and, and uh, Florio, you know? <laughs> you know? So, you know, maybe that's an answer. Um, I think it'd be really smart. I think it would help keep people together. Uh, and then not to mention a succession plan too. Right. Especially the young buck, you know, maybe you get older, what's my plan? Cool, if you sell five, 10% to one of your guys and girls, you still, you, I mean, you're gonna put the contract in your, in your favor, obviously, you're the majority owner, but now they got some equity, you know, they got some stake in the game. They're not gonna open against you, they're you know, part owner. So anyway, we'll talk about that later, but you see where I'm going with that. I think that would be brilliant. Um, for black belts and structures that you want to keep and you know keep in the family, if you would. Yeah. Okay, next one, it could be a franchise. Better do your homework. We've all heard of stories that people that wore green uniforms, um, that uh, <laughs> that uh, they didn't work out so well, you know? Um, but yeah, franchise could be fine, but again, you better really know your stuff, especially if you're gonna sell franchises outside of your state. Yeah, then you're doing what the FTC or FCC, what are the two? Um, yeah, okay. Uh, this is what uh, Hanchi De Kovar taught me years ago. He says two to three schools is somewhat manageable. Um, you know, he said three is a different animal. He said two schools, you can bounce back and forth, or one of your aces runs one and you run the other. So when Harry and I had, when I had just two schools, Harry's been my employee till last year, uh, he ran one, I ran the other. It wasn't that hard. You know, could we have made it more lucrative and this and that? Yeah, of course, but it wasn't that hard. Um, however, he said, but if you figure out three, then four through six is easier. And I remember him telling me that. I would kind of agree. I look at multiple schools, kind of like kids. You got one kid, you spoil the hell of the one kid, right? <laughs> you got two kids, they watch each other. Okay, fine. Where's your brother at, right? You have three kids, there's always one up to no good. <laughs> right? There's always, a, and it may change, right? Not that'd be the same kid. But there's two are playing, they're bored, but there's the one, and that's how running three schools, I think, is like. Two, no problem. You bounce back and forth. Maybe you're a very micromanaging type person, which nothing wrong with that. You know, so maybe Monday, Wednesday, you're here. Tuesday, Thursday, you're there. You're teaching a lot too. You know, no problem. Uh, but when you go to three, life changes. Yeah. And then I would say even four changes even more. Yeah, five, six, okay, fine. At that point, you're used to having a bench. You're used to having, now you're thinking on a different level. I Three or four, that's whenever your original plan, was that solid or not? Have you changed your SOPs? Is your foundation strong or not? If it ain't, it, you, you'll know. Yeah, and I went through those pains too. Yeah. And again, questions at any point, guys, go jump in. Okay, uh, let's go on to win multiple locations. <laughs> some say never, right? And again, there's some people who just don't have it in their blood to want to do that, and maybe they should. They need to have one location, they love micromanaging the one, being on that one. And I, and I mean in a good way, they're good at managing, you know. For me, I'm good at the technician side, I'm good at the entrepreneur side, the managing side, my ADD kicks in. Yeah. Can I do it? Yeah. Do I like it? Do I nerd out on it? Do I geek out on it? No. Either put me on the floor, I can still teach, put me on the floor, or let me run the company, but in between the day-to-day, -day, that's where Harry was so good at. <laughs> He was smooth at that. He didn't want to rock the boat a whole lot. He was so good at it. And uh, so I came up with a system. We dial it in. That was the way until we updated it. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So when you open multiple schools, when the first one is making great, consistent profit and completely turnkey. So you don't have to go in there at all. We'll see how it goes for me. I go to the Philippines in a week and a half. I'm gone until the 25th of October. Hopefully the house will still be there when I get back. Yeah. We'll see. Um, but yeah, it's got to be consistent profit, completely turnkey, to where you and your people or you are not in there and having to run it. Uh, when the new area is scouted out, okay, uh, next one, when you decide to start with a club or satellite or go full retail dojo. Like when I open up the next one, Georgetown, Kentucky, number five, if you want to look at the stats, it's, they're off the charts. If, you, uh, if your kid goes, if you work at the University of Kentucky, you live in the suburbs in Georgetown. You know, if you work, if you uh, work in Lexington. Anyway, um, we will go in there. We'll put a flag. I'll build it out, and I'll hope it works. Yeah, I'm not gonna play around in a satellite twice a week, and hopefully you see the value you added. Although you're in the back of a health club, that may change their mind in a couple months, right? Which we had that happen too. Yeah. Do you look for a certain population? Yeah, all that. Income and stuff like that. All that, yes. Yeah. Is that 
What is that? How do you look that? Oh. Yeah. Oh, you can Google it. Yeah, you can Google it. Um, but yeah, I look for I look for around. I'd like to have around thirty thousand people around me. I'm in the kid business predominantly. But don't say anything. You heard Charlie talk about it earlier. Um, I look at median household income and then the age of people. Where would you like to be household income? It depends on your area, right? So it's high for Kentucky, it might be low in Rhode Island. You know, um, I've always heard you know 60, 70, 80 thousand per household. I think I even heard somewhere too uh, uh, that people will spend around two to four percent of their income per month on discretionary activities. So if you figure you're around two hundred dollars a month, one fifty to two hundred a month for your basic program, do the math, you know, and then you look at okay, well, how much do you want to make per month? Now we're talking about a business plan, right? Most people want to make about forty to forty-two thousand a month gross revenue. Okay, if you're at that, if you're at a what fifty percent net profit, you're twenty grand a month. Yeah, if you're more at thirty, a lot of guys are at thirty, then you're probably at what fifteen grand a month, twelve to fifteen, somewhere in there. So, and then you try to you know scale that. Um, but anyway, yeah, those are just some of the things you look at. So, um, real quick, back to that yeah. second point. When's Consistent. What, how, did, how, how would you define consistent? Whatever. Like, like, what, well, yeah, like summer. Yeah, I know, right? Summer's plumps yeah. for us, but yeah. then it picks back up again. Like, right, oh. and as long as you're, yeah, and that's fine as long as you're ready for that. Yeah. Like I told Harry, Harry has been one year that he's been an owner. I'm like, cool, when you get to year three, give me a call. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because one year plus he took over school, I was making good money. The rent there is very cheap $1,700 a month for 3,200 square foot. Oh, yeah, now the household income, you may say, well, what's demographics over there? They're not good. Hmm. But the overhead is less, too. So, you know, it's one of those things. Uh, we, have the, we have the summer thing, too, also. Yeah. We, we all do. We're snowbirds. You take yeah. summer yeah. off. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we all do. Yeah, you're good, buddy. Um, but, yeah, so it, uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah, look at that. And then, and then just prepare for it, right? You know, in the old days, they used to can all the vegetables and all that for winter. <laughs> Yes, prepare for winter, prepare for summer, right? right? For us, we do summer camps. Yeah, that helps um, helps with the income loss on that. Uh, maybe try summer programs. Maybe you do a, uh, a tournament or two in the summer to make up for some of that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you sell some lifetime memberships in the summer to make up for that. Or some seminars and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you gotta get a little creative, yeah. But yeah, when it comes to consistent profit, uh, that's just that, you know, you know what you're making, you can afford a couple of bad months maybe, you know, and but again, it's consistent. It's completely turnkey. Just like we know, when if you do test fees, we charge more retail on that. Uh, we know that test fee money's coming in every two months. So yeah. Okay. Uh, what we got here? When you decided? Okay. Uh, when you have money put back and then double it. Yeah. So everyone thinks, oh, it cost me so much over the next school. Double that. Yeah. Just being honest. It costs me to do a build out, and I do after school and camps. I'm a little more than what the normal you know, um, dojo would be. Cost me 75 grand to 100 grand open a dojo. Yeah. yeah. And now, cash burn rate, that's another story. All right, we're just talking about opening it. Now, I'm not going to name any names, but a certain franchise that wears green. <laughs> um, we're selling it for a franchise two to two fifty to buy a franchise. Yeah. Okay, build out to specs. You got to do a franchise now. Is another one hundred to one hundred forty. You're at four hundred grand. That's a big nut. Just to get in. Big nut. And that's cash. I mean, there's no how much financing was done. It's probably, you know, you laid it all out. So if you got your life savings, your four hundred one k, whatever, you know, you went to your family, whatever. But now you're at four hundred k, and then the doors open. Well, you're looking at, which we talked about earlier, the positions. You're at, what, a program director of 4K a month. You're at an instructor of four or 5,000 a month. You're at rent, because it's retail. They got me in prime spaces, four to 6,000 a month. Could be more. And then you're at utilities. You're at 15 grand a, nut, a month easy just to get that nut. That's cool. You got better. You better hit quick. You know? On top of the half a mil, roughly, you just laid out. Right. Yeah. And that's why some of them are bailing up. And, Amongst other reasons. Do you always feel you should be in a retail location or could you be in a... Right. And that's where you got to look at your model, yeah. right? If you're running adult, a gym, CrossFit model, yeah, warehouse. If you're running kid, dojo, where you need the, the kid going to the Kroger and the mom, you know, the kid's pulling away while mom's going to Kroger, yeah, you need to be there. Until you get established. And then you go buy your own warehouse space maybe and go there. Yeah. That's kind of what we're in. Yeah. 
but we're already two blocks off the main drag. Right. And we're close there, and they're building 12,000 homes within a mile. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it all works. You know, the cool thing about social media marketing nowadays, man, you can plant wherever. Uh, I still like good mar. I still like a good location. The one I'm looking at in Georgetown, the the plaza is dead. It's a dead plaza. The rent's pretty good, but the convenience is right off the bypass. Mm -hmm. To your point, so it's not at all a warehouse, but it's a dead plaza, and all the schools I need are all near nearby. And I have zero competition as of today in that town. So. And I'll do a three-year lease. That way, if it doesn't work out for whatever reason, I'm not too much on the hook. You know, after that, I'll try to redo it for a five-year lease. Is what I like. Uh, I'm glad I did a three-year lease because the school I shut down they had a shooting out front. It was a three-year lease. I just had to pay off 20 grand of it in August and September mm -hmm. to get out of the lease. So you tie that in the beginning, three year plus five to two five. You can. Years. You can negotiate any way you like. I usually do three, <laughs> and about halfway through, I like to renew it for five. Yeah. Try to put in a different LLC each time as well. That way, different company. Really? Yeah. Different one each time? Oh, you better. Especially when you start doing multis. Huh? You get a lawsuit on one or something like that, which I've not had that. But let's say, so let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about the one I just closed, right? Um, that one was in my main LLC. So Team Elite LLC is named my company, right? Team Elite. Well, it's Team Elite LLC. You can look this for Secretary of State. Team Elite LLC 3, Team Elite, uh, Team Elite LLC 4, Team Elite LLC 5. Those are just holding companies for leases. You do that for liability. So they can't take everything. Well, that's what happened. So unfortunately, I wasn't that savvy back then. Back then when I had this one, I put it under Team Elite LLC. That's the one that owns all 14, 13 of my vehicles, plus my truck. Two or three of my leases are in that name. Like, yeah, you know. Now, some say that if I had planned it a year prior and moved some stuff around, it might have worked better for me, right? But you got to watch how obvious that is from what I've been told. Yeah, so yeah, if you're going to do multiple locations, have multiple LLCs to put for holding companies. Yeah. But yeah, what happened with that school is um, I had, I shut it down in January to combine it in the other school. Uh, my payoff on that was about 50 grand of that lease, plus full utilities, plus the CAM, which was a blank check. Mm -hmm. So he sent me a check, he sent me a bill. He's like, oh, here's your CAM for 2022. I'm like, it's the same price as a freaking rent. Plus I play CAM, pay CAM every month. Yeah, well, our cost went up. I'm like, next lease, I'm going to try to dial it in where you can't have a blank check in the camp, but then how bad do you want that space? I was say, can you itemize that for me? Yeah. Yeah, they paid their buddy retail price. They don't <laughs> go do it. You know? Yeah, like, well, okay, fine. You want that? Like, how many people do it with insurance money, right? You get it cheap and, you know. And you say, okay, well, Justin Last said, hey, man, I need to write a bill for lawn mowing. You know, you know like half a, you know, like a million dollars an hour, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, yeah. We but, have a problem with camp also because... Yeah. Especially in Florida, one of the stores that all of a sudden we're on a condo association. These yeah. Right yeah. They all of a sudden we're doubled. We went from 600 yeah. a quarter to 1200 It's stupid. And I'm yeah. like, whoa, that's a hell of a job. But we had to do it because either that or you're not insured. Right. Right. You either do it. It's like my, my dad always said, my grandpa, it's yeah. awesome to do a business. Good. You just got to suck it up and figure out another way to. Breach it. Yeah. Breach it. Yeah. These are things you don't learn about when you open your first notion, mm -hmm. let alone number two, three, four, whatever, right? First dojo, you're just happy, man. I'm good at crop, I'm good at taekwondo, baby. Here we go, build it, they'll come. And you do it, you're like, yeah, I'll sign that lease. Sure, man, rent looks good. Oh, fuck, that was a five-year personal guarantee. Oh, crap, okay, <laughs> you know. You know, luckily I've not done that one, but you know what I'm saying, or seven-year personal guarantee, you know. Um, in what fact, some ways you get out of the personal pilot guarantees. Sure, I'll go over that in a second. In fact, a certain company that wears green, uh, <laughs> They had a uh, franchise company that wears green. They had, uh, they were selling, I think you have to sign an eight or 10 year franchise agreement. I think that's pretty common, Wendy's and others too maybe. Anyway, they were advising their clients to also sign their leases for eight to 10 years. Right. Because that way it matches up with your franchise, it makes sense. Well, a lot of these cats were new business owners, right? They had J.B. Morgan and jobs and this and that. So guess what they had to sign? Eight to 10 year personal guarantees in that lease too. So think about the math, you're out 250K, to buy the franchise, you got about another 100, 140 to build the specs. You got about half a mil. Oh yeah, you're on the hook for probably another half a mil. Oh yeah, and then good luck on staff that. development. Now you're gonna go hire an instructor off the street. Oh, that always works out. You know, then you're gonna try that out, and you hope that they're not trying to sleep with all your students, or uh, you know, or, or beat them all up. You know, so uh, sometimes. That's why they get sued, isn't it? I'm gonna have a lot of other reasons. <laughs> yes. 
yeah, there's a lot of reasons for that. But your question was, how do you get out of a personal guarantee? Number one, try not to sign it to begin with. Mm -hmm. I fight that tooth and nail. Gotcha. I really do now. Or I'll do a short-term one. Yeah, I'll say, listen, guys, I'm not a rookie. You know, it kind of does piss me off, man. Like, Charlie, I started in 02 as an owner, too. I was 20 years old when I was an owner. And um, so, I mean, I got a track record. I'll have, I'll even have letters of recommendation from other landlords that, hey, you know, Will pays on time. He's a good tenant. But there's some, sometimes I have to do a six month or a one year personal guarantee. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's as far as I'll go. Any more than that? The cool thing is, I have multiple units now, so I don't have to have that space. I want it, then maybe I don't need to. Whereas if I'm just starting off, maybe it's what you got to do. And then you're betting on you. Yeah. All the way, all the chips in the middle of the pot. And then COVID hits. <laughs> yeah. And you hope you're not in the blue state. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, you know, that's another story, yeah. Um, hopefully you got plenty of PPP and EIDL money and and whatever grants you could get, and you know, and uh, I have a friend of ours who got all that money. He wanted to take care of his staff. He's, he met Noble with it. He gave all of his staff all the money, although the state and the feds were giving stupid money away, more than we got. Guess what? It's two years later, all that staff's gone. He just gave him money. He could have had him file unemployment, which is what I was advised to do by a friend of ours in Rhode Island. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, you know, and I kept, well, I went from 20 employees during COVID down to one as here. And I kept him to do all Zoom stuff that we all were doing. Yeah. He was the only employee I had on payroll. I went one week from 2025 down to one. Wow. And I told the rest of them, I said, listen, I will sign your unemployment paperwork. <laughs> like, I want you to go get your money, okay? And we opened back up, well, the surge in two weeks. Sorry, my Republican views are coming out. Uh, but anyway, um, but yeah, whenever they come back, I say, hey, we'll hire you back. And we hired everybody back. Yeah, yeah so we did. See, I should have done that. I kept everybody on. Right. Well, luckily, you. like a lot of our students yeah. stayed on board, so I wasn't. <laughs> right. But it was tough. Like, yeah. You're just yeah. being the government's unemployment form. So right. that's all you're right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, so I brought, I brought two people on during COVID. Smart enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're yeah. learning. We're learning. <laughs> yeah. It depends on your state, right? You know, it depends on your state. It depends on your region. Like, even here, Chris White, who we're brothers, a good friend of mine. Um, well, you're in Robertson County. It's a different county. Davidson County is very um, different on their lockdown procedure and how they did it. Mm -hmm. So it was totally different here. They didn't care. I mean, it was wide open, get back over for business. The other ones, not so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so totally different animal. He had two schools back there. Virginia, same way. Where I'm at, everything yeah. needs to be close. Uh, like two hours south of us. Yeah. Free. Wide open. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Central, Central Virginia. It's crazy. Yeah. Anyway, anyway just... went on lockdown. Venice, that's already yeah. left. Wow. And they went lockdown. I actually black tinted my windows and kept on operating. <laughs> a lot of them <laughs> agents did that. Mm -hmm. A lot they of them. They closed down my wife's nail salon. Yeah. And like, I'm like, well, you ain't closed me down. I went to yeah. work. I'm not. Yeah. I shouldn't see this. I, I locked the look and took it all with me. I'm like, you're gonna drag me out of here. It yeah. ain't gonna happen. Right. And I would, I would text my people, tell them back to work. Yeah. They're gone. They just left. Come around the side. Right. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of. I, 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 I should do a little better. They through. put garbage bags yeah, in front of their windows. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't sign up new people, or if they did, they'd really scan your background yeah. you first. Know somebody to get in. Know somebody to get in. There was no open mat nights. There was no hey, can I come in a roll? No. You know, of course, everybody, a lot of people doing temperature checks and all that, too, you know, whatever that did. Um, but anyway, all right, let's see what we got here. All right, we good? Yeah. Okay, so good discussion. All right, um, so again, win multiple schools. Some say never. When the first one's making a good profit, when you have the new area scouted out, when you decide you're going to go club satellite or go full retail dojo, when you have money put back and then double it, when you have all your SOPs dialed in, and then the last one on this part would be when you have a business plan, meaning your revenue, your expenses, and your forecast. Okay, we probably opened our first school on hope and prayers and this and that, and obviously it worked pretty well for you guys. But when you open number two and three, it better be a plan. Because what will happen sometimes, again, you'll be robbing Peter to pay Paul. And you're going to cash burn for a while anyway. That's going to happen. And what do they say? It takes at least one year for a business to break even, and that's if you're good. Now, if your pre-sale game is really good, hey, you may do all right with that, but that's a big risk. You know, I mean, I mean, you don't say do that, but you can't count on that all the time. So, ex you know, expect that you're going to cash burn for a while. So, you have that huge build-out cost, right, whatever that is. Maybe you get it done cheaper, good, uh, but then you have the cash burn rate. Now, hopefully, when you negotiate your lease, you got about six months free rent. Hopefully, you got a tenant improvement budget, too, some TI money where they're helping you with some of the build-out, too. 
And then hopefully your digital media game is so good on point where you got leads coming in and you're doing sales and signups now too. So do you, do you recommend lease as opposed to trying to build something yourself and having a more like owning you mean? Asset? I think yeah. Charlie, you own your building, don't you? Mm -hmm. Talk to Charlie on that one. Okay. Uh, but I think you started leasing right, and then you build up cash flow. And yeah, in fact, let's pick his brand at the end. I've heard. Yeah, I would love to hear about. Yeah, that. yeah, let's do that. Um, I've owned rental property, you know, as a landlord, so I've with residential. But I've never done commercial. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. All right, um, let's keep going. Would you mind asking what, did, what do you offer, like as a sign up when you open a new place when you first open? That's so cool. Um, I wish my enrollment director at the time could have wrapped her head around it better. We'd be so good at it now. You give them a founder's rate. Basically an offer they can't refuse. To quote, you know, the Godfather, they can offer they can't refuse. So you might waive the, the down payment, you might discount the monthly membership, whatever you gotta do to get some cash flow coming in. Okay? Now, what do you do with that? You're not open yet, Schneider. Are you making any money? Well, you're making some down money up front. It may maybe you even sold a whole program, a one, two, three year program up front for a deal they can't refuse. If you have another unit, they start training in the other unit. So you give an option, you say, okay, Mr. Lassen, we're gonna sign you up. We plan on opening November 1st, two options. We can start your billing now, you can start training at our current location, and then we open, we just transfer you on over, or we can put you on hold and pause November 1st, when it opens, you can start there. That's it. So you leverage what you already have. Yeah, that's how you do that. But yeah, as much as you can pre-sell, the better. You know, and that way you build us some cash flow. I have a friend of mine, it's open up number seven, uh, down in South Carolina, I think he's already planning on doing like 40, 45 K his first month. Yeah. His rent ain't that high. <laughs> yeah, good for him, right? And obviously he's in the after school business, so that's a need, not a want, true, but you know, but anyway, he got into that and he did a lot of pre-sales, but his leverage and his branding was so damn good because now he's got social proof, right? And that shows he's got the other six locations. So when they're like, I don't know if I want to sign up, you're not even open yet. We got six others. Okay. You're the, you're a regional dog now. You know what I'm saying? You're you're not you're not fly by night karate guy. Yeah. All right. Uh, where multiple locations? Not too close to your current location. Mistake I made. When I opened up uh, that one that I closed, the one I opened up down the road was a little too close. Less is more. So try to spread them out a little bit. Now some of the densely populated areas. You're in the Northeast. I get it. I get it. But if you're not that densely populated, then yeah, make sure it's not too close. What does too close mean? I don't know, I don't know your area. I think in Manhattan, you could open up a million of them, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, if you're in more our area, a little more rural, or rural, um, then I would go a good 10 to 20 minutes away. By, by drive. Yeah. So we know how the miles thing is, right? It could go either way for you. So I'd go 10 to 20 minutes away. Some places have geographic boundaries people don't want to cross. That like, too, yeah, yeah, you run into that. Bridges, railroad tracks, yeah, a lot of that stuff. You do. You know, you might Which be a little bit closer, but like that's maybe the less yeah. part of town. Yeah, yeah, those are all things you look at. I mean, for me, like Lexington, okay, some of you have been to Kentucky, you have Lexington, uh, and you could do about two to three schools in areas, 300,000 people, mm -hmm. make sure it's in a good part of town, right? Um, and then you have the suburbs after that. So, yeah, as long as you're not too close, you're good. And you'll have some people that will train at multiple locations, the only plan of fitness would do. And that's another perk of signing up with you, right? As opposed to the guy's got one school down the road. So again, building your brand, building all that, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, I wouldn't go too close because they can devour each other. They can eat each other. Yes. Okay, next one. In a good market. All right, here you go. A uh, high income has your target audience. Money isn't always the best indicator. Well, why do you say that? Uh, for example, retirement communities may have high income, but probably not your demographic, unless you're really good at yoga. Yeah, or silver sneakers. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you see that in Florida, right? I love Florida. Oh, I love Florida. Florida. We do have that. Oh, yeah. We have a lot of young people. Yeah. But our average age, I mean, we have guys 50s, 60s. Nice. And do really well. Yeah. And they love it because they're like, they don't want to play golf. They, they want to learn to defend yeah. themselves. They love the, the fast-paced class. Nice. You just have to make sure you watch it. If they look like they're not having, you know, film, you step off to the <laughs> side. Right, right. right. <laughs> but I'm not young either, so sure, it's sure. kind of like, it, it kind of works in our favor a little bit because they Good. show up consistently. Yeah. And they talk to everybody. Yeah. And they that's talk true. to everybody. They pay. They don't argue. Oh, that's what you want. Okay, fine, no problem. Yeah. Just sign me up. You get a full package. Right. And well, and you guys, and I know you're all's program. You guys are running your program. Uh, and I, I know, you know, your instructors and all that, but that's where it's cool. Imagine if a guy had opened up an MMA gym in that area. 
targeting MMA, <laughs> young. They actually are doing that right now. There's a guy down the street doing it. I'm thinking. Let me know how that turns out. Yeah. I wish him well. All right, let me know how it turns out. <laughs> um, but you know what I'm saying. So just know what your business is. That's what I was asking Charlie earlier. Like, you know, what his demographic was. So know what you're trying to go for, um, and then make sure it matches that. So if you want kids as part of your business, is there enough there, or is it free and reduced lunch? And what you buy? You know what I'm saying? So and that's something that realtors say. They got to be careful in how they say certain neighborhoods now. You know, they'll tell you that. Well, the free and reduced lunch is super high in this area. Got it. Which means low income. Hmm. Yep. That's still bad for them to say. Oh, I know. I know. It's just a code word. That's wrong. Yeah, I get it. I, I'm not saying I'm in favor of it. I'm just telling you what they share with me. You know, I'm not saying that I approve of it or any of that. But, but I'm just saying I would like to know that before I go and just put that big investment in there. Yeah. You know, sure. the school that I, the one I closed, I took over during COVID. They didn't make it through COVID. You know, and um, so they, and I, I wouldn't have went there anyway, honestly, but it already had been open since 92. It had been there forever for a couple generations. So we got in there, but had I uh, just opened, it would have been in that area because of the demographics. You know, income, the crime rate was high. Mm -hmm. There's a McDonald's right in that plaza, and Justin's been there. There's a McDonald's right in that plaza. Somebody went by and shot at the windows of McDonald's. Oh, no. Who shoots at the windows around McDonald's? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, um, so yeah, it's got to really watch your areas. And that's something I didn't know. I was always in small towns, you know, you know everybody, you know, and. You know, it's no big deal. Well, if you open it the wrong neighborhood, or the neighborhood changes. You gotta watch that too. Yeah. Okay, uh, what do we got here? Uh, how about staffing? Uh, does your staff want to work there and live nearby? I ran into that. So when I came up years ago, I had one school in a little small area. It was great, but I couldn't scale. Because the only staff I could hire would have been ones that I produce, and that takes a while, right? We all know that. So I didn't want to hire from the guy down the road. He was a weirdo. Didn't want to do that. And that was it. And then for me to hire people in to work there, well, no one wanted to live in that area. In fact, HSBC Banking um, used to call it Siberia of their locations. <laughs> Nobody wanted to be there. Right? They want to be by an airport. You're an hour, 15 minutes away from an airport. You know. So um, how's your staffing? Can you get enough? And your staff's going to be what between the age of 20 and 35. You know, teaching classes, you know what I'm saying, your owner, right, they're teaching, it's probably between the ages of 16 to 40. You know, do they want to work in that area? Can you get staffing? Uh, one of the issues that we deal in Eastern Kentucky is the drug epidemic. There's a lot of big companies that go in there and kind of find out, no one can pass a drug test. There's the meth, all the stuff going on, fentanyl now, right? So you gotta look at that too, you know, can you staff that area? All right, uh, if it's going to be retail, uh, what are the spaces? If you starting a club, what deal can you make? Um, again, whether you want to start as a retail or as a club. And again, I've done both. At this stage of the game, I will always go right into just opening, put my flag down. Yeah, hope that it works. Yeah. Okay, then you can charge full price, too. If you go into where you're doing it twice a week and you're going to, quote, build it up, all right, how are you going to pay that instructor? How does that work? You know, do you have that much staff laying around? Most of us don't, okay? Um, and that's what happened at one of my locations. I opened up, I was going to do after school summer camp only. I had to send an instructor over to teach twice a week at four o'clock. I said, well, crap, it's half an hour away. That's what teach some karate classes while you're at it. <laughs> you know, I didn't want him to go work for Amazon. So, yeah, we ended up adding our karate program after that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next one, multiple locations. Make sure your current one is rocking profit and duplicatable and scalable. Okay, that's a little different. Meaning, let's say that you're Charlie. Charlie can teach a lot of stuff. Very talented, always has been. But, and I, obviously it's scalable. But let's say you get a guy like him or you guys, right? You guys can all teach multiple styles, right? How does that scale for your next location? And him and I spoke about that. I remember we used that at my schools in, uh, in Kentucky. How, do you, how does that convert? You know what I'm saying? Maybe you love teaching hat. Maybe you love teaching hat keto. But is anybody else in your staff qualified to do that? You know what I'm saying? Maybe there's something that you really geek out on where you love teaching this, but no one else can do it. How can you scale that? How can you duplicate that? That's something that, that Harry and I talk about a lot. You know, you have to cookie cutter a lot of your stuff in order to make it scalable. That's something I liked about what Charlie talked about today was lesson plans. So this is like coming it down a little bit? So yeah, yeah. I mean, let's face it, if McDonald's wanted to serve steaks, they could buy it cheaper than anybody on the planet, couldn't they? 
They're bulk buying, but there's a reason why they don't. They stuck with pretty much with burgers. You know, a couple other easy things to add, but they kept it simple, you know what. And that's why, if you notice, too, I went into, I was in Vegas. Uh, I went to Five Guys Burgers. No, in and out Burger. You ever see how small the venue is? It's small. Yeah. Yeah, you go in there, you're like, well, I guess I'll have that. <laughs> you know, you're like, uh, you want animal style on top of that? Mm, he does. I, you know, maybe, you know, but it's, it's a couple of items on the menu. Look how scalable they are. Their reputation, too, huge. Fresh, fresh fries, fresh shakes, homemade everything. Yeah, it's good. Smash burgers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mater Redneck loves it, you know. <laughs> you know yeah. It's good, you know, and they're known as that's a, that's a thing, you know. And they, they were good at what they were good at. You know, they really said, hey, we're going to focus on this. And you remember in the 90s, for those who've been around, remember in the 90s, it was like have every program there is. It was a cardio kickboxing. Yeah. Yeah. It was MMA. And then it which came a little, well, they had that too. And then Hap Keto even had a, had a thing going. Uh, they say Japan and Gracie Jiu Jitsu, like it was all of it. You thought if you didn't do it all, you were just a bum. Right? Well, now come to find out how many schools you see down the road that specialize in one thing. One thing might be Taekwondo, might be Jiu Jitsu. Right, but they're getting pretty damn good at it now. You know, learning how to how to program, they're learning how to sell it, uh, how to develop staff with it. So that's a long answer for that first one. Meaning, uh, it's a rocky profit, but duplicatable and scalable. So along that lines, yeah, because a lot of times I've found that that schools can be very personality driven. That too, and that's hard to duplicate. Yes, that's why your systems better be on point. Yeah, but even with that being said, the instructor you hire better have some personality. You can't coach that, really, can you? Unless you're young, maybe young, you might be able to. But you can't go, what they say, hire for will, coach the skill, or something like that. Yeah, if they got personality, cool, we can work with that. But if they're the personality of that table. <laughs> Do you mind if I add to that? Please. So, uh, from my curriculum, the way I teach something, specifically what I say, I want everybody on my team to speak the same exact way. Yeah. So, bend your knee, keep your turn, land forward. So, however I teach something, they have to teach it the exact same way. So whether I'm there or not, it sounds like I'm there. Yeah, so, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, and plus, how do you measure it too? Let's say we're like, hey, why is this school not doing as well as the other two? Right. Well, if they're all different variables, then you know, you know or if you hear, I, I can tell when they say, well, I do it this way. Well, they, they do it this way. Yeah. Can't measure it, too, right? Whereas, pretty much any French fry you get from McDonald's across the country, pretty much tastes the same. Yeah. And obviously, people love that salt. And a little bit of sugar. They a little bit of sugar. Too. Yeah, a little bit of sugar, baby. Well, they add there too. Well, they're consistent. You pull off the high weight. If you see when you're going to go there, there's no other place. Well, and why, do you, and why do your kids mm -hmm. yell and scream for it? They, they know those McNuggets are going to taste yeah. like the way they expect it to. What to expect. Yeah. Although Domino's in Israel does not taste the same. <laughs> I will say that for the record. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, what we got here? Scout your location, a town nearby. We talked about that. Suggest staying within one hour of your current location. I have some friends that went way far away and now they'd be driving to those locations and had to deal with that. McDonald's model, I was told, so I had an old godfather who owned 11 McDonald's, okay? The rule they had back then in the 80s was you had to live within one hour of your restaurant. Mm -hmm. The idea, if a crap hit the fan, you could be there and you could deal with it. That's the way it was back then. I'm sure it's changed since then. But you get the overall concept. You got to be able to get there and take care of it. All right, become an expert at staff development. Uh, have your head instructor and program director. We talked about that earlier, about staff development. You better be really good at that and like doing that. Be a teacher of teachers, right? And not just the, you know, that stuff, right? I mean, you know, the other stuff, the soft skills and the hard skills. All right, negotiate your lease. There's a whole section we can do on that. But do look at the term of your lease. Look at the personal guarantee. Look at the TI budget. Look at how many free months you can get up front. Uh, and make sure you're the only type of business in your plaza, right? You don't want to be eaten up by the other guy that comes into town, or maybe you're running after school karate, and then there's another uh, daycare opens up in there too, and they're doing school age. Wait, wait a minute. So put in your lease to where maybe you're the only jujitsu academy too, or if you plan on even doing fitness kickboxing, put in your lease anyway. Yeah. All right. Um, and permission to operate your business as is, meaning you probably get a little loud in your dojos. Mm. You probably turn music on for your kickboxing class or whatever. Uh, make sure that's in your lease to where you can operate it as a school. That way, by the way, one of my dojos that I'm in, the one you've seen, the new one, mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to be there. It's because it's close to another martial arts school? No, Edward Jones is next door. Hope they don't see this. Um, 
But yeah, so I moved in. You know this, we were trying to move in this plaza, right? We couldn't get in. Come to find out they were selling the plaza to somebody else. All right, fine. It was the old sleep bathrooms. We took over an old sleep bathroom space. You know, good for us, right? Nice place. Uh, he's been in there. So anyway, um, we got in there, we signed the lease. Well, they sold it to the other the other place. Well, Edward Jones next door, who hates our guts because we get a little loud in the walls with that then. <laughs> and I get it. The girl that runs the office is very, very attractive. Um, but anyway, the guy that owns it there ain't happy at all. Evidently, in corporate lease with Edward Jones, so here's something free fact for you. You can't have any dance schools, martial arts schools, or gyms next door to them. Mm. Well, we got it under previous ownership. Mm. <laughs> you know, so we just snuck in. Yeah, we got so lucky on that. Uh, but yeah, technically, we're not supposed to be there. Do they complain? Oh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> All the time. Luckily, the landlord, for whatever reason, likes me a lot. I, actually, I have Winchester and yeah, Richmond in the same landlord. And he's a cool cat. Eli is his name. And he's like, man, all they do is complain. He says, man, I'm just going to kick them out, let them out of their lease. I'll get another tenant in there. Sure. Man, we're full anyway. Like, okay. I'm like, we'll try to be nicer. You know, we'll try to turn the volume down a little bit. But it's a shame because our speakers are on that side, too. And they're right on the other side of that wall. And then our after school kids, guess what? That's the wall they, they're beating on. <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm sorry. You know, like, yeah, yeah, and they're not real they're nice. Happy metal, so just lucky that yeah. I do it next door. But everybody yeah. hears it from the back of the door. Like, oh my God, we got a guy going on there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, yeah, there's that. All right. Uh, among other things. So, yeah, at least negotiating. We could talk about that for days. Um, but I'm going to keep moving. Great discussion. All right, number eight. <clears throat> All right, find a contractor for your build out, have a deadline and a written agreement or price. We all got horror stories on that, right? Contractor didn't do it in time, he thought, she thought, you thought, but it wasn't written down and it didn't work out that way. Yeah. Uh, have a deadline, because man, well, I was, I was actually building out two schools last year at the same time, Nicholasville and Hamburg at the same time. Well, they were spending time on Hamburg, it was closer to their house and their employees instead of getting Nicholasville done done. Meanwhile, I'm behind schedule, opening doors in Nicholasville. Yeah. So make sure you have a deadline on there. Uh, make sure you get all your insurance, your permits, all that good stuff, and then begin promoting now with pre-sales. Okay, and use social proof, right? Your current website, uh, bring them in for tours, um, and even use your current locations to ramp up your student account. And believe me, the manager of that location is going to love it for a few months because they get credit, right? All the, in, you know, so yeah, make sure you keep your books separate. Uh, you'll definitely need a new CRM. You know, if you're using Spark My Studio, you'll need another account. Some guys trying to get cheap with that. Don't do that. Have a separate one for all of it. Um, that way you don't commingle anything. Okay, uh, be ready for cash burn. We talked about that. What is your break even uh, per month after build out? So, what's your build out cost? Fine. And then, how much is it going to cost me to run this place every month? You know, if you're owner operator, how much do you want to make per month? You probably need to make at least four, five, six grand a month, right? To make a living, feed your family, whatever. So add that on there. Um, you know, so put that on there. And then I look at, we talk about how to run multiple locations. I look at some KPIs, which stands for key performance indicators. Uh, they are financial, they're also daily performance stats. And here's what those are for some of those. Do you have different uh, banks? Sorry. Yes, yeah, so different bank accounts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because your merchant terminal is going to go with those checking accounts. Correct. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and it's easy. So, like, if you were to get them online banking right now, you see about nine accounts. I have four for the four dojos, one for HQ, which is the bill pay account. So, I'll take the money, I'll put it in HQ to pay the bills. So, it all comes out of that HQ account, and then I have some personal accounts. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, you want to separate it out for sure uh, when you have multiple units. I know some people do the, the book, Was It Profit First? by- mm -hmm. I love that book. Yeah, by the yeah, yeah. It's Polish name, I the name, I'm Polish. Um, but uh, yeah, there's, the only, I think it's great. The only thing is I think they have a lot of accounts, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the concept's good, but just keep it simple. Yeah, I actually run my finance through yeah. Profit First, good. same method. Yeah, as long as you think, hey, I'm a, you know, yeah. <clears throat> I like Damon John's got the book, uh, what is it, Start With Broke? Something like you know, the power of broke. Yeah, David John, Fugu guy. Uh, yeah. yeah. And he talks about that. The idea is you always have that hustle growth mindset, you know, where you take your money, you put it back, all right, cool, but today's a new day, and you're always hunting as opposed to sitting back. Well, I'm okay. Well, I'm okay. And then you're that frog that was under the blender, under the heat, and then you got, you know, you got burnt all of a sudden over time. 
Okay, uh, KPIs that I like. Number one is your gross, gross sales, whatever. Number two, expenses. Uh, number three, your net profit or net loss. You know, be real with your numbers. Okay. Uh, in fact, my money board now on Mondays, the directors have to put it on the board. Not me. And it's not a power thing. The reason why I do it that way, they know their numbers and they own accountability. They own their numbers. So when they get up, they're like, well, those aren't my numbers. It's your handwriting. <clears throat> you know, so numbers are numbers, right? So they're not, right? So yeah, they get up there, they put down their numbers, and then we, and then I analyze their numbers for them. That's what we do. Okay, uh, net profit, net loss, uh, student member count, obviously that's important. Your, your new leads, because I remember uh, Barry Vanover told me one time, he said, if Jesus Christ was teaching karate, he'd still lose a few students every month. <laughs> Meaning people moved, all right, you know, they moved, all right, let's go up Catholic. They moved, um, they got hurt, right? You know, I mean, you will have to replace people, you'll have to do that. Uh, I think what Kovars, they try to hit like a 3% attrition rate per month. That's considered really good. A lot of schools are 5 to 10% a month. Well, do the math, guys. Think about it. You're at 3% a month times 12. That's how much per year? 36. Yeah. Times three years. That means every three years you're replacing your student body almost. Right. So you better be on that new student sign up game, right? <laughs> and upgrade game, too, honestly. I'd have a little bit of both. Okay, uh, new leads, appointments booked. We talked about some of this this morning. Uh, the most, most important, sign-ups, okay? Uh, what is your goal of signs per month? Best locations lose 3% a month. Even great restaurants throw away on use food. So you're gonna have some, some waste, all right, or some quit, okay? All right, uh, plus two frequent visits. Um, if you're owner operator, keep your eye on the KPIs. So I actually made myself a checklist. And if you want, I'll put in the group for you if you like. But I have a checklist for everybody in the company here. He had to do it too. And I made myself one. I come in every day, like, what am I supposed to do? You know, because it's really everything, right? You're like, I got to focus on it all. And then I made myself a checklist and, okay, here's what I'm going to focus on. And uh, it holds my team accountable on. You know, you know what some of it is? The DQ list. How many quits do we have? How much behind tuition do we have? Because they don't want to maybe face that sometimes. Uh, how sign ups, how spending. I never yeah. thought to do that. Have a list for myself. Yeah, I pretty much do it. feel like I know it. Feel like yeah. But having that list keeps me. Do that. Yeah, I make your own checklist. Yeah. Uh, stuff I have on mine would be how many leads came in yesterday. Did they sign up or not? Mm -hmm. How many upgrades today? It would also be the the DQ list. Like you know, we have one DQ list. They're behind like a grand. Yeah. They're still training. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got about done, Mark. Uh, we got here. Uh, also become an expert at QuickBooks. That's going to be your system you're going to use for your finances, uh, taxes, and CPA. We have fired three CPAs in the past two years. But they're lazy, just like people are too. And they're not, right? You know what I'm saying? But you're going to get what you're going to get. So don't be afraid to fire a CPA if they're not returning your phone calls. Um, taxes, attorney on standby. What I mean by standby is having your cell phones. Yeah, you should be able to call your attorney. Call your CPA, text them on their phone. Don't be high maintenance, but if you need to get a hold of your attorney, maybe you need to get a hold of your attorney, right? Um, you know, or your CPA. Uh, have set staff meeting times and agendas. Know your numbers. Train to sales. Train to teaching. And grow, baby, grow. All right, Mark. Last slide. <laughs> Mark. If y'all need a hold of me, here's my phone number and address and all that good stuff. Email. Yeah, used to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, give me a holler. Questions, comments, anything else? Your attorney, um, did you already pay a retainer? You can't. Usually you will. Mm -hmm. Depends the case. Normally what happens is when you get an attorney, it's like starting a new relationship. Uh, in my area, they're about 250 to 350 an hour. Uh, probably higher for some of you cats, maybe lower. Uh, usually it's a 2500 dollars retainer. Yeah. But that's if you're taking on a case. Maybe you're dealing with a parent or whatever. Some of them, if it's small stuff where it's just correspondence, they'll just bill you per hour. Yeah, but if you don't have any cases, you just want that. Yeah, just there. go over and say, hey, man, how much is it to, to, to review my lease? And they'll probably say, hey, a couple hundred dollars, you know, or a couple hours of work. Got they'll it. just bill you per hour, but it's worth it. Mm -hmm. It will save your butt. Save thousands in long term. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Appreciate yeah, with Charlie, I'm going to pick his brain, too, and how he bought his building. Yeah. And the pros and cons, that would be really cool. Yeah. Yes, sir. The market job start in three minutes. Awesome. You guys, appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Yeah.
have to get a beer later or something. Yeah, yeah, we can definitely talk about that stuff. And John started. You doing it? Um, second part is. Oh, nice. Did not know that. It's the go. What? Next door. I did the same thing. It's further down. Who ever thought of such a thing? I've been a two state fairs and eight county fairs. I've never seen that one. 